In soccer, the header is effective, simple and direct. When done correctly, you can be the Flying Dutchman like Robin Van Persie or a rock-solid Virgil van Dijk. Mastering defensive and attacking heading in football requires proper technique, timing and positioning. So here's a comprehensive guide for both aspects of heading in soccer. We'll start off with defensive headers. The defensive header is crucial for clearing the ball away from your own goal, ensuring the safety of your team's defense. Here's what you need. Number one, body positioning. As you see the long pass or cross coming into your area, you need to make sure that you're on the balls of your feet and not flat footed, whilst also slightly bending your knees as this will help you generate power. You also need to stay balanced by keeping your feet shoulder width apart for stability. And of course you want to position yourself so you can keep your eyes on the ball. You need to focus on the ball's trajectory as well as the opponent's position. Number two is technique. You want to contact the ball with your forehead and because it's a defensive situation you want to head the ball away rather than getting a flick on. And so your connection point with the ball should be with the middle of your forehead. But timing is probably one of the most important factors. You need to anticipate the flight of the ball and jump at the right moment to meet it at its highest point as jumping too early or too late can just lead to the ball going over your head. And your arm positioning is also vital, you can use your arms for balance but also for leverage by swinging your arms up helping you get a higher jump but you don't want your arms to be flinging waywardly out to the side as you want to avoid connecting with opponents as an elbow to the opponent's face could lead to a free kick or a penalty or even worse a red card. Step 3 is the direction. Where your headed clearance goes depends on the angle that your head moves towards the ball so you want to try and generate power to head the ball away from goal but usually from defensive situations this isn't as hard as attacking situations as rather than being precise you really just want to get your head on the ball and direct it up the field away from your own goal. And step number 4 is obviously practice. Setting up drills by practicing defensive heading with various crossing and corner scenarios will give you more confidence and assurance during these situations in a game. It's also good to practice under pressure with a player around you rather than simply on your own because this is more like a match scenario. Very rarely are you as a defender going to have a free header. Most of the time you're going to be challenged and so you need to get used to jumping up alongside the attacker and still managing to win the header. But now we move on to an attacking header. Rather than just heading the ball away out of an area as a defensive header involves, an attacking header involves directing the ball towards the opponent's goal, or at least to create a goal scoring opportunity for others. If we look at the positioning, you have to read the game, anticipate the trajectory of the cross, and because you are aiming for a smaller target, the angle at which you approach the ball is going to change your heading technique. But before the cross or long pass comes in, you first want to be finding space by moving away from defenders and finding gaps in the opponent's defence as an unchallenged header is a lot easier to score than going up against a defender. Now there are a number of different factors for the technique. First your timing of the jump is important. You want to be jumping slightly early and meeting the ball at the peak of your jump. Also your heading position as well. Your neck muscles will allow you to generate power but more importantly from an attacking point of view. The use of your neck muscles are going to allow you to guide the ball on target. And keeping your eyes on the ball is essential, making sure you contact the ball not just at the right time, but also with the right direction and power. And in terms of direction and power, placement is incredibly important. You want to aim for the corners of the goal, where the goalkeeper is going to find it hard to get to. However, a header into the corner may not always be possible, and this is where power is important. You generate power from your legs and core muscles by jumping, not just your neck muscles. However, of course, for a strong header, your neck muscles are important, as some crosses, particularly floated cutbacks from the byline, are going to require you to generate a lot of, if not all, of the power. And this is generally applicable during crosses that are coming back away from goal. Think outswinging corner kicks or crosses from the byline where the ball is essentially coming back towards you and you're headering it towards the goal. However, if the cross is coming more from the side or from a deeper position on the flank, you're going to need more of a flicking technique where the contact isn't as firm but the pace is already on the ball and so you really just need to flick the ball, guiding it towards goal. And because for a lot of these crosses, you're essentially just going to be jumping side on towards the goal with your body facing the touchline, you're going Going for more of a flick technique, trying to use the pace on the ball to direct it towards the goal. And of course, just as I said for the defensive headers, practicing heading drills under game simulations is important, not just heading the ball from crosses, but also doing so under the pressures of defenders, as actually winning the header in the first place can actually be the main obstacle. 
But whether it's from defensive or attacking situations, there are a few general tips that you can use to improve your heading overall. Strength and conditioning is obviously important, you need to build your neck and core muscles to enhance the power you can generate from your headers. But you also need body control, work on your overall body balance and coordination when jumping, which is vital for an accurate header. Communication, you need to be able to talk to your teammates, especially during set piece situations, to coordinate defensive and attacking headers effectively. And of course you need confidence, you need to be able to believe in your abilities and commit fully to the header, as if you are indecisive, this can lead to you not connecting fully with the ball or connecting with the wrong part of your head, leading to the ball going into an unintended direction. And remember, consistent practice and coach feedback can significantly improve your heading ability. Stay dedicated and with some time and effort you'll be clearing your lines like Virgil van Dijk or heading in goals like Harry Kane. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and check out some of our other videos as well.